Hi there, my name is Sarah Feinerman and I am here to talk about the hypothalamic hypophyseal portal system. Put simply, the hypophyseal portal system is a blood system of vessels in the brain that connects the hypothalamus with the anterior pituitary gland. This is a part of the endocrine system, which is a collection of glands within an organism, such as the human body, that secretes hormones directly into the circulatory system or a distant target organ. The hypothalamic hypophyseal portal system works through negative feedback, which actually creates a positive situation. Negative feedback is a way for the body to maintain homeostasis. The hypophyseal portal system is controlled by negative feedback through the hormones released by the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus has the ability to release a stimulating hormone when a function in the body needs to happen or increase, and it also has the ability to release an inhibiting hormone when a function in the body needs to cease or decrease. Here is a simple view of the location of the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland. They are both pictured within the circle. Here is a zoomed in view of the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland, though we will only be focusing on the anterior portion of the pituitary gland for this specific concept. The hypothalamus is an endocrine gland located in the brain and it is responsible for hormone production. The anterior pituitary is a major organ of the endocrine system, which is also known as the adenohypophysis. It is the anterior section of the pituitary gland as a whole. The anterior pituitary is in charge of regulating several physiological processes such as growth, stress, reproduction, and lactation. Both inhibiting and stimulating hormones secreted by the hypothalamus control this organ. The pathway between the hypothalamus and the anterior pituitary gland consists of a few different steps. First, the neurotransmitters within the hypothalamus must receive a signal. That signal will then tell the hypothalamus which hormone to release and will be sent down through the primary capillary plexus, also known as the primary capillary bed. Next, the hormone will travel through the portal vein, which is located between the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland and is very closely associated with the capillary bed. Then, the hormone will travel through the second capillary plexus or second capillary bed. This way, the materials are more efficiently transported because they avoid going through the entire length of the circulatory system. Now, we are going to discuss the different hormones that the hypothalamus releases and sends to the anterior pituitary gland. From then, we will also talk about which hormones are then released from the anterior pituitary, what their target tissues or glands are, and what effects they have on the body. One of the major hormones secreted by the hypothalamus is GnRH, gonadotropin-releasing hormone. It is a hormone secreted by the hypothalamus with the intention to be sent to the anterior pituitary. In response to GnRH simulation, the anterior pituitary produces both luteinizing hormone and follicle-stimulating hormone, also known as LH and FSH, shown here in the diagram, which travel through the bloodstream to the gonads. Gonads are organs that produce gametes. In females, this would be the ovaries, and in males, this would be the testes. Once the hormones reach their target gonad, the specific gonad will release certain hormones. In females, the ovaries will release estrogen and progesterone, which both play a key role in menstruation and reproduction. In males, the testes will release androgens, one being testosterone, which also plays a key role in reproduction. Females also have testosterone, but in very small amounts compared to males. Another hormone secreted by the hypothalamus is TRH, thyroid-releasing hormone. This is sent to the anterior pituitary, and from there, the anterior pituitary releases TSH, thyroid-stimulating hormone. TSH then travels to the thyroid gland and signals the thyroid to release thyroid hormones T3 and T4 into the bloodstream and these two hormones are transported throughout the body where they control metabolism. Every cell in the body depends upon thyroid hormones for regulation of their metabolism. If T3 and T4 were not present, the body would constantly be out of homeostasis. Lastly, the hypothalamus secretes corticotropin-releasing hormone, CRH. This is a peptide hormone and a neurotransmitter that is involved in stress response. When released from the hypothalamus and received by the anterior pituitary, the anterior pituitary releases adrenocorticotropic hormone, ACTH. This is a hormone that is often produced in response to a combination of biological stress and low bl blood glucose levels. ACTH then travels to the adrenal cortex of the adrenal gland. 
The adrenal gland consists of three zones, and the zone that is involved in this process is the zona fasciculata. In response to ACTH, the zona fasciculata releases cortisol, a hormone categorized as a glucocorticoid. This primary function of cortisol is to increase blood sugar, suppress the immune system, and aid the metabolism of fat, protein, and carbohydrate. This concludes my presentation on the hypothalamic hypophyseal portal system. Thank you for watching.